Hello everyone, today we are talking about section 12.2, which is dealing with series and what we call summation or sigma notation. Uh, series and the summation notation that we're talking about are very close really, closely related to the sequences we talked about last time. Those sequences were really a list of numbers that were then separated by commas to indicate that list. With a series, what we're going to do is we're going to take that list of numbers and we're going to add them all together. We're going to find the sum of that list. Now, there's different applications of when we might want to do that, um, but this can be a pretty helpful thing. And so there is some notation that goes along with it. That's that sigma piece that we'll talk about. Um, but we got to start here with what a series actually is. So a series is going to be what we call the indicated sum. Okay, And we have to say it's the indicated sum because there's lots of different sums for uh, sequences um, in different series. There's different numbers of terms that we can include. So we have to have an indicated piece there. Um, so it's the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence. So that's kind of the true mathematical definition of it. What we really want to think of this as is really we're just going to be separated by addition signs instead of commas. And now that's almost too simple of an idea that it kind of loses what we're actually trying to do. Switching from the comma to the addition means that we're actually doing something mathematically with those numbers, um, and that's really what we need to focus on. So that's the very simplistic way of saying, well, it's a series now instead of a sequence. Um, one thing that's going to be kind of important here that we need to talk about is what we call a partial sum. Now, a partial sum is the idea that it's not everything added together. It's just however many terms I wanted to include for some reason. And so to do that, um, we have to do this for infinite sequences because if a, se a sequence is infinite, that means that it goes on forever and there is no way to truly get a sum because I can always add in whatever that next term is. So there's no kind of ending sum. And so we use these partial sums to figure out, well, if it doesn't end, we ought to say it ends at some point. Let's say it ends after this term. What's the sum up to that point? So what just what's the partial piece up to whatever point I decide? So again, we're going to say that this is used for infinite sequences. I got my spelling off a little there. Um, this is indicated, or we're going to use the notation capital S with a subscript of N, and that is the sum of the first N terms. So we're starting to get used to seeing this subscript of an N. So that's going to tell us the term number. That's the last one we're going to include. So if I say this is S sub 6, then the sixth term is the last term that I would include. But I have to use every term that comes before it. So the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then I end with the sixth. So we have just some examples here dealing with the even numbers. If I gave you S sub 1, well, that is just simply... Um, the first partial sum, so the first term. So it is simply just 2. Okay, um, S sub 2 is going to be taking the first two terms, so 2 and 4, and I add them together to get my sum of 6. So my actual answer here is the 6. Same thing for 3. I take the first three terms, so 2, 4, 6. Add them all together, gives me 12. That would be my S sub 3, or my third partial sum. My fourth partial sum, or S sub 4, is going to be the first four terms, which is the 2, 4, 6, 8, which gives me a total of 20. So these down here at the end are my actual answers. This in the middle is just kind of showing me the work. I guess this first one is my answer as well. No work for that one. Okay. Now, that's a nice, easy notation to use if we know our sequence, but sometimes we aren't told the sequence, and so we have to use this different notation to kind of incorporate those rules that we looked at last section, as well as however many terms we want to use. And so that's where we get this summation notation, also known as sigma notation. And I'm just going to put that there because we're going to use that word sigma notation a lot. So um, this is just another notation that we can use. So this is used to denote or kind of show the sum of a sequence defined by a rule.
All right now, in the first section, we talked about whether we had explicit rules or recursive rules. For sigma notation, this rule must be explicit. Okay, and we'll talk about why that is here in just a second. Okay, um, and this uses what we call sigma, which is really just a Greek letter. We use the capital form of it. It's kind of like pi or theta. We use those Greek letters every now and then, and we have one here. So let's actually take a look at what one of these looks like. So this example here, kind of in these bubbly letters, is a sigma notation. So this E-looking thing here, this is sigma. So this piece here, this is the letter sigma. That is what we use to say sum. So whenever you see that symbol, it means we're taking the sum of something. Now, there's three pieces here that we need to talk about. The bottom one, we have k equals 1. This is always the first value of k. When we write this, we're always going to start with a value of 1 because we always start with the first term. However, we can do sums that don't start at the beginning. We could do a sum that, say, starts from the third term to the sixth term. I would indicate that here by saying that I start with k equals 3. So we can change this value, but for us, when we're writing them, we're going to stick to just 1. At the top is the last value of k, so the last value that we want to include. So essentially, we're including the terms between the number on the bottom and the number on top. So here I'm going from the first to the fifth term. And then what comes next to it, or on the right-hand side here, is the explicit formula for the sequence. So when we were practicing writing those explicit forms in the last section, that's really why we are practicing these, because that gives us the piece that we need here to use in our sigma. So let's actually go ahead and try one of these. So we're going to start with our first example here, 1a. We have 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20 all being added together. I need to write the following series in a summation notation. So I'm going to start with my sigma. I write my sigmas like this. I don't necessarily put the curls on the end, but you could if you want to make it really clear. Um, doesn't really matter as long as I can see that that's what you're talking about. Just make sure you have these slanted parts to the E sort of shape and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, then I'm going to start with just two very basic things. The first thing on the bottom is we always put the letter that we're using. When we get to sums, we start to use K a lot instead of N's. I'm not really sure why we do that. It's just a little switch that we make. So we're going to use K here. Um, and we start with K equals 1 because the first number I want to include is my first term. I'm sorry, you can't see any of this. So I want to use my first term here which is going to be the 4. So I start with k equals 1. Then I need to figure out the last term I want to include. Well, really, that's how many terms do I have. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 20 is the fifth term. So the last number I want to include is 5. That's the last term number I need. Okay. Then it turns into a problem very similar to what we did in the last section. I need to figure out how do I write the explicit rule for this series or really I can think of it as a sequence now. So I'm going from 4 to 8 to 12 to 16 to uh, 20. Hopefully you're seeing the pattern there that I am adding 4 each time. Okay, If I'm adding, I'm thinking of that linear pattern, so something like y equals mx plus b, where m is my change, that's my 4 that I'm seeing going from one term to the next. And then b is that starting value. Now remember, I really need to go back one more term. So the way I go back one more term is I subtract a 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, so really I have a plus 0 on the end. Now, I'm not going to include that 0 because I don't really need it. It's just going to get in the way. I'm also not going to include the y equals. When we write this explicit formula, if you look at what we do here, we just write the portion that includes the terms that we need. So I'm going to include just the 2k. Here I'm going to include the 4x, but I'm going to make that x a k because that's the variable that I'm using. So here, this is the sum from 1 to 5 of 4k. And that is my answer. Okay, so you really have three pieces to figure out. You got the number on the bottom, number on top, and then formula that goes next to it. Number on bottom and top should be two very quick pieces. The formula next to it might take a little bit more work. Okay, let's go down to part B here and see if we can figure out this one. Now this one I gave you on purpose. This one has a lot of fractions involved. Um, it's got some weird patterns going on in the denominators as well. First thing I want to do before I even start, I have all fractions except for that first term. So what I want to do is I actually want to rewrite this. Um, instead of having a 1 here, I'm going to write this as 1 over 1, and that's just going to save me a little bit of time later, just thinking of those all as fractions. Okay. 
Uh, I am trying to write a sigma notation, so I'll start with sigma here. Start on the bottom with k equals 1. Again, we always start with that. Then I need to figure out how many terms I have. Well, here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms to get to the 1 over 36. So I'm going to put the 6 on the top. Again, the number of terms goes on the top there. Then I need to figure out my formula. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. I know I have the 1 on the top. So before I do anything, I'm going to put just the 1 on the top. And I can think of the bottom then kind of as the only thing I have to figure out. So I have a 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. So if I look here, if I go with my adding pattern, um, going from a 1 to a 4 is 3. 4 to 9 is 5. 9 to 16 is 7. It doesn't really seem like there's a pattern there. That's kind of jumping all over the place. Um, multiplying, maybe we can try that. 1 times 4 is 4, but 4 times 4 is 16. I kind of jumped over the 9 there. And even if I multiply again, I don't get to the next one. So that one's kind of jumping around as well. So my two patterns that I normally use don't work. If that happens, there's got to be some other pattern that we can recognize. Okay? I'm not going to give you sequences that don't have any patterns to them. And so there has to be something here that is a pattern. Some of you are probably screaming at your screens right now because you already realize what the pattern is. But if we look here, I have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. Those are numbers that I'm hoping you start to recognize that these are what we call our perfect squares. Okay? You can think of them. They're the numbers that we can take the square roots of. Um, and get whole number answers, okay? or they're the whole number squared. So this is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and 6 squared. And that's actually the pattern I'm going to use. I'm taking my term number, basically, and I'm squaring it. 1 squared gives me 1. Second term, 2 squared gives me 4. Third term, 3 squared gives me 9, and so on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that term number, which, again, now I'm using as k, and I'm going to square and that gives me my formula. I can quickly check it here. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and 6 squared is 36. All of them have the 1 on top, because I already have that written, and that piece is going into the denominator. So there is my answer. Sorry, I kind of went over top of that one, but that is my final answer. Okay, now that's writing sigma notation. That's one way to do it, but we can also go the other direction. I can give you a sigma notation. So on the second page here, um, we're going to look at somewhere I'm giving you sigma notation. Now to do this, it's really a matter of do you understand what this is asking? If you can understand the notation, this isn't too difficult to do. It's a little bit of work. Um, I will admit that there is a lot of kind of writing things out and figuring out what everything is. But if you understand what the notation truly is, then it's not too bad. So let's talk about the notation just a little bit with our first example here. Um, I know it's kind of small. A lot of these end up getting some small writing as we do them. But for a here, 2a, I have k equals 1 to 6 with the formula of k squared minus 10. Okay, now a couple of things here. This is my formula, so that's gonna be what I'm using to find all of my terms. I know the sigma means I'm adding all those terms together. So if I can figure out each term of the series and then add them together, I will have my answer. Okay, now that's really what my directions are telling me to do. Expand the series means find all of the terms. Evaluate means then add them all together and figure out what your actual answer is. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Now, this kind of notation here tells me exactly what I need to do. k equals 1, this number on the bottom, is my starting value. That's the first value of k. That's the first number I plug in. So I'm going to start by plugging in 1, which is 1 squared. Then I have this minus 10 at the end, because that's just part of my formula. So I have 1 squared is 1. Minus 10 gives me a negative 9. Okay, and I'm going to be a little bit light in the work that I'm showing. If you want to be a little bit more clear on that, you can make another step there to show how we're getting the negative 9. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the next whole number. So I plug in 2. 2 squared is 4 minus my 10. 4 minus 10 gives me a negative 6. Okay, again, this is, might be where you want to write 4 minus 10 or something like that just to show more work. I'm going to keep going. Plug in your next whole number, which is 3. 3 squared minus 10. Uh, 3 squared is 9, minus 10 gives me negative 1. Uh, next one's going to be 4 squared, minus 10 is 16. 16 minus 10 it gives me 6. Uh, next one's going to be 5 squared, minus 10. 5 squared is 25, minus 10 uh, is going to be 15. Um, before I keep going, the question that we always get now is we get into this pattern. We know what we're doing. I'm getting all these terms. I'm figuring this out. But how do I know when to stop? Okay, and again, that goes back to knowing what the notation means. If I go back to 
the first part of our notes here. Okay, this number on top is the last value of k. That's the last number that I plug in for that k value. So I start with the one on the bottom and I stop when I get to the one on the top. So here I've purposely stopped at this point because my last number I need to plug in is 6. I've done 1 through 5. The last one I need is 6, which I'm going to square minus 10. 6 squared is 36 minus 10 gives me 26. Now I've expanded the series. I know all of my terms. But what a series really is, is it's all of these terms added together. So I have a negative 9 plus a negative 6 plus a negative 1 plus 6 plus 15 plus 26. Now, I've written these as plus a negative. You could leave these as minuses, um, but I want to kind of highlight the fact that these are all added together. Okay, From there, that's the expansion, but I need to evaluate this. So I'm going to add these all together. Well, on my calculator, I can quickly type those all in. Um, I've already done it, so just to save time, I'm going to tell you that your answer is 31. And that truly is my answer. Even though I've asked you to expand and evaluate, the evaluate is that final answer. And remember, evaluate always means just give me a single number, give me a single answer. Okay, All this other work, that's my expansion piece. I need to see that. That's the work that I'm looking for. But I don't necessarily need to circle that. My final answer is the 31. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one here. Uh, the next one that we have is the sum from 1 to 5 of 5 times 2 to the power of k minus 1. Now this one might be a little bit tricky. you got to be careful with the order of operations when you're doing these. I still start with the number on the bottom and I plug it in for k. When I do that, I have 5 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Well, I know I have to do my exponents first. So 1 minus 1 is 0, and anything to the 0 power is 1. So this whole piece is becoming a 1, and I'm multiplying by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing you can do with this as well is you could go and type this whole thing in your calculator. Just make sure you get parentheses where you need them, and then you'll get your answer there as well. Uh, next one, we're going to do 5 times 2 to the power of 2 minus 1, well 2 minus 1 is 1, and anything to the first power is itself, so 2 times 5 is just going to be 10. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through these a little bit faster here just to save time on the video. Um, if you need to, you can go back and look at these a little bit closer um, as far as the work of how I'm getting these, but I'm simply plugging in all of my whole numbers, starting with the 1, and I'm going to end when I get to the 5. So this is going to be my last one here, plugging in the 5 minus 1. And when I do that, I get an 80. Okay, now this one I haven't done ahead of time, so I'm going to quickly grab my calculator here, um, clear this out, and add them together. So I have a 5 plus a 10 plus a 20 plus a 40 plus an 80. Add them all together, and I get my final answer here of 155. Okay, and that's really the work I need to show. This one I showed it kind of listed out as the series. That's up to you. If you have all your terms listed and give me a final answer, I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, let's move on to the bottom here. Now, there's this weird little box in the middle here. Let's quickly talk about that. Um, this box says that if I start from k equals 1 and I go to n of a constant. Now, this c here is just a number. Okay? It looks like a letter, but it really is just a single number. Then it's saying that that series is really just n times that number. So what that's telling me is if I get just a number here, so there is no k involved, I have nothing to plug into then all of my terms are simply that number, and I'm adding it n times, because I'm starting from 1 going to n. So I have n times that I'm adding that number to itself. So I'm repeatedly adding the same thing over and over, which we know is multiplication times however many times I'm doing it, or n. So that's where you see the n times c. Okay, um, Let's actually do that here for a. Okay, Now I'm going to do this a couple different ways. Just to highlight the differences here, you pick whatever way makes the most sense to you and go with it. We're going to get the same answer every time. So let's do the simplest way first. Okay, I'm starting with k equals 4, going to 10. So first thing I should do is plug 4 in for k. There's an issue. There's no k. So what that tells me is my first term is 6. Okay, now that's when I plugged in the 4. Then I'm going to plug in the 5. I get a number, another 6. I plug in 6, get another 6, 7, get another 6, 8, get another 6, 9 gets another, oops, another 6, and 10 gets another 6. So this was 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, now, if I look here, I can add these all together. 
sorry, if 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 6 is 24, plus 6 is 30, plus 6 is 36, plus 6 is 42. So my answer is 42. No matter what I do right now, I know my answer needs to be 42. So a couple other things I can do. I'm going from 4 to 10. Now, if you think about 4 to 10, if I'm starting with 4 and ending with 10, I can figure out how many numbers are there. I know they're all going to be 6s, so if I can take that 6 and I can multiply it by how many of those 6s I have, then I'll know what I need. I just simply multiply by that. Now, this is where this is a very simple question, but it's a very complicated thing because of the way we count our numbers. The question is how many numbers are between 4 and 10, including both the 4 and the 10? Well, I kind of have them listed out here, so I encourage you just to kind of look here. I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I have 4 to 10, including the 4 and the 10. If I count them, there's actually 7 numbers here, which is a little counterintuitive, because you want to do 10 minus 4, which is 6, but what that doesn't do is it doesn't include one of these two ends. It only includes one. And so what we have to do is we have to include both of those ends. So there are seven numbers there, which again, seven times six gives me the 42. Same answer as what I had before. My encouragement to you is if you get a question like this, you have fingers. Use them, okay? Count from four to ten. So I'm kind of cramped on the screen here, but I would actually take here and I would count from four to ten. I would say four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the five then 9 and 10, I have 7 fingers, so I know 7 times 6 is going to give me my answer of 42. So I know it seems very elementary, but if you're getting the right answer, who cares? Get the right answer. Use your fingers. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, last one here. Uh, it's labeled C because I deleted a problem out and didn't change it. But uh, let's talk about C. I'm going from 1 to 15, and my value is just K. Now this one, we can list them all out. This is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, plus 6, you might want to fast forward the video, I'm just going to write out all the numbers, 2, 15, keep going here, 13, try and get them all in here, 14, and 15. Now, I need to add those all together. Now, could I go to my calculator and type them all in? Absolutely. You'll get 100% the right answer as long as you type them all in correctly to your calculator. So, go for it. I'm going to try and be a little smarter about it. Okay, now, there's a little trick here. Because I have all of my whole numbers, I can start to pair these numbers up. The way I pair them is I take my highest and my lowest value, and I add them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 15 down here on the end, and I'm going to put it down below here. Okay, now this 1 and the 15, they're now a group. That group adds up to be 16. And now I can move to the next highest and lowest that I have. So I'm going to take the 14 and pair it with the 2. Get rid of this one down here on the end. Pair it up. Hey, look, that's another 16. Okay, pair them up again. 13 and 3 is another 16. 14 and 12, 15 and 11, 16 and 10, 7 and 9. I do run out here. I have this extra 8 kind of left over. But I have all these pairs. And if you look at all of these pairs that I've matched up, they're all 16. So I have how many pairs of 16? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to take 7 and multiply it by 16. It saves me from some time from typing in my calculator. And I did have that extra 8, so I do need to add that 8 on. But now I can grab my calculator and simply do 7 times 16 plus 8. Gives me an answer of 120, which is the correct answer. If you want to take the time to add them all together, go for it. It'll get you the right answer. But it is kind of a lot of work. So it's a little bit easier maybe to pair these up, see how many pairs you have, and then go from there. So quick little trick, just kind of a fun thing that you can do with those numbers. So that is your series. Biggest thing with series is just understanding what that sigma is. So let's just quick review it one more time before we head out. We have your sigma, number on bottom, number on top. Um, let's give you an example here. I think it's the same one we had on the front. Okay, number on bottom is your starting K. Okay? Starting K, starting value of K. Top is your last value or ending value of K. And next to it is your explicit formula. And again, it is important that that is your explicit formula, not a recursive formula. It doesn't quite work out with recursive. All right, that is it for your notes today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and we'll take care of those questions.